Mr. Bogan, what exactly did Dr. Danielson do? And what's he going to testify about? Dr. Danielson reviewed all of the raw data from CBI regarding the mixtures in the living room in the house. That includes the likelihood ratios, <laughs> the deconvolution reports, the electropharograms, and associated work that CBI did. Um, that includes the work by Rebecca Strub, Sarah Miller, and Teresa Charomska. He also calculated um, his own set of likelihood ratios for the mixtures in the living room. What's been and when I say like mixtures in the living room, I'm referring to CBI 1.1, 5.1. 3.1, and actually 2.1 was not a mixture. Um, that was the one that um, tested, as Dylan, 1.1, um, 2.1, 3.1, 5.1, 6.1, Judge. And he cal based upon the electropharograms and common and uncommon alleles, uh, he calculated his, his own likelihood ratios um, and percentages for those mixtures as well. Um, he also reviewed the use of phenylalanine, phenylphthalein, excuse me, and luminol as it was used by CBI in this matter. Um, so he will testify about. So he's an expert in that? Yes, he he's an expert. We endorsed him as an expert in DNA and trace evidence, Judge. All right. So he will testify about CBI's analysis and conclusions and likelihood ratios and deconvolution, his own, and why they differ. And to do that, I don't necessarily have to talk about um, how the star mix program works, why he is familiar with that. Um, he'll also, I mean, it's all, it's all contained in his 17-page summary of testimony and report that was provided to the prosecution, I think, close to, if not a year ago. Okay. All right. Well, I haven't read everything that I want to read. I want to make sure I get this right. Uh, I mean, there's a couple different things I could do, and um, it could end up being unfair to one side or the other, depending on what I do. It might be the appropriate thing to do to um, not find me to be an expert based on uh, the other findings. That might not be appropriate. I need to do some legal research. I need to look at the Keller case, which I know he testified in. The Keller case. Thank you. Um, which I'm going to do over the weekend. So what I want to do is hopefully have him whenever he testifies, since it's not going to happen today, uh, hopefully on Monday, but if it's a different date, that's fine. Have him, um, I want you to go through his qualifications as an expert, to uh, try and get him qualified. I'll listen to any boy dire that you have, and then I'll decide where we're going to go from that. We may have to get, have the jury leave at that point. Okay. Mr. Doherty, unless you guys have a stipulation that you want to reach and we don't have to go through all this. Sorry, I'm not. Let me catch the last part. That um, you do your voir dire, and then uh, I would probably have the jury leave while I'm trying to make a decision as to what to do in case we need to argue about it. But I don't see, if I let him testify, I don't see any reason to have him go through his qualifications twice and the voir dire twice. Any concerns or questions about that? I mean, I think from talking to counsel, we might be on the verge of a stipulation. I don't think any of the analysis that I recited to the court, the prosecution is objecting to. Well, that was my what I asked, was unless the parties have a stipulation. And I didn't know if you did or not. Your Honor, what I had talked to counsel about is that if the court granted the people uh, the opportunity to cross-examine Dr. Danielson on the issues that I addressed earlier, then I would not seek to block him as an expert in DNA interpretation. Right. And I want to be very clear 
that's different than DNA analysis. And Council and I had a, I think, productive discussion about that, where if Dr. Danielson was uh, presented as a potential expert subject to the court's approval, in DNA interpretation, not forensic DNA analysis, the people would not oppose that qualification. And I'm doing that, although I believe I could, people believe they could, Your Honor. I'm doing that in the effort to give the defense an opportunity to present a full defense with an idea uh, or a view towards how an appellate court might view this if we ever end up there. So I would not oppose that qualification. I would not bore dire on it, but I would seek the opportunity to cross-examine the doctor so that the jury can appropriately assess his reliability as we discussed earlier. And the only thing I would say in response to what counsel said is the methods that Dr. Danielson used to evaluate star mix are his own, and I believe not validated. And he's also doing an interpretation of DNA results provided by CBI. And those two things go directly to the issues uh, that he's struggled with in the past. And that's why I'd seek to cross-examine him on those. All right. Thank you. Is that a stipulation or not? You don't have to decide now if you want to wait till the end of the day, but we probably need to know today. Right. And my understanding from talking to counsel is that counsel's definition of analysis is when a qualified DNA expert, expert takes the biological material and does an analysis of whatever is on that within their own lab. Well, I would assume that would also go into whether or not there was any criticism of the way it was analyzed, wouldn't it? I think that goes into interpretation, Judge. I think uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't find that. I would find that's analysis. The way that it was, the test was run, not not what they said it meant, but the way that the tests were conducted. That's what I'm saying. I don't think he can testify under that certification. If he's only certified it for interpretation, correct? Do you agree with that, Mr. Doherty? Are you thinking? Are you seeking? Something? No, I agree with that, and I do think. Uh, Counsel, and he'll correct me if I'm wrong in saying this, but I, I believe he's trying to have Dr. Danielson say that he looked at the peaks and reached different conclusions about likelihood or percentages that the court's heard a lot about already. Uh, I think that's interpretation. Right. right. But to the court's point, I agree about the view where we start to touch on analysis. Yes, the court's correct. But uh, but yeah, interpreting mm -hmm. what the raw data is is fine. Right. This percentage, this is what this means. But in terms of the actual testing that was done or any criticism of that, that would not be part of that. And respectfully, I think this begs the question, hypothetically, if Dr. Danielson says on a particular mixture, his analysis is one person contributed 40% and another person contributed 60%, and the evidence before the jury, according to CBI, is that the first person contributed 10% and the second person contributed 90%, the natural question and one that he's qualified to answer, which falls within his, his expertise very much so, is why are your likelihood ratios, your percentages different from StarMix? And he can address that question because he knows how StarMix works and he knows his own analysis. Again, that's, that's interpretation. But it's the actual testing itself that gives you those values is what I'm saying. You can't criticize how they came up with that with this endorsement. And I, and I understand, I'm not trying to be a pill here, Judge, but when you say those values. The values that came from CBI, you can interpret. The values, their interpretation was the percentages. His interpretation will be something different. You can talk about the difference with Star, with star Mix because that's an interpretation program, is my understanding, correct? Yes, Your Honor, the court's correct. And he can talk about why he believes in his expertise his interpretation is different than Starman. But he can't, for example, and I'm using his example, say, well, these values are wrong because they have too much, have too much, uh, you know. Right, because in, in the Dixon issue, in the Dixon not, I, I just did that because it came to mind. I'm not, not the same issue, but something okay. that they, they did wrong to get those values. He, he cannot testify to that then with the stipulation. That's how I would interpret the stipulation. Can I take one more deep dive and ask? I, I just want, I'm no, not going to be able to. It's, no, it's fine. It's, 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 this is saving me a lot of time this week, and it's your stipulation, so I'm totally right. fine with it. Right. So I, I can't commit to the stipulation. I just want to make sure I'm understanding which way the court's trending right now. For instance, um, the court 
bar, depending on what happens during voir dire and qualification and whatnot, um, whether or not he gets qualified in analysis or only interpretation. No, no. The the agreement is that it would be interpretation. Okay. If, if we're getting to analysis, there's no stipulation, is my understanding. And then I have to make the determination whether or not he's going to be allowed to testify or not. Okay. And go through everything else. Right. And, and under the court's current definition of interpretation and, anal and analysis, if he was endorsed or qualified only in interpretation, he would be precluded from saying when CBI said on this particular item that they had this quantity, this many nanograms of stuff, and that led to their conclusion, CBI's processing of this material leading to this many nanograms, this much stuff, is an error. That would be outside the realm. That would be analysis. That would be analysis. And if he was only qualified for interpretation, he wouldn't be able to say, for instance, they got the quants wrong, therefore all their numbers. He has to accept the values they gave. Okay. Okay. And, That's a simple way to do it. Okay. And, which I think I said. And, and I know, Judge, but I'm, I'm not. I ain't a PhD in genetics, and now I understand how the court's going to define analysis and interpretation. And when we get a break in the action, I hope to meet with counsel and with Dr. Danielson and with Mr. Redwine and say, do we want to litigate this over the weekend? Or well, you're not litigating it over the weekend. Well, I'm working on it over the weekend. I'm litigating it on Monday. Right. Do you want to litigate this on Monday, or does this stipulation still breathe life into Mr. Redwine's defense, as we all discussed? So I appreciate the court's guidance on this issue. All right. And, and, I can, and if you need a longer break to do that, I'm fine to do it. Okay. okay. I think early today, I don't care. Because with Dr. Ha and who you have, are you going to go till 5 if you ever start? Pretty close to five. I think we're going to go Jerry Apker first, who will not be as long as Dr. Ha. Okay. And then Dr. Ha for as long as, as people want to be in the courtroom. Probably. We won't we won't, won't limit it by that. So with that, can we bring the jury up then? Um, and I think we can. Thank you. Mm -hmm.